You're listening to the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. And folks, I don't know. I think I might have figured it out. Uh, with Dion, is it about uh, Dion Sanders himself? Or is he just completely a man with a tremendous amount of confidence? Is Dion Sanders going to fail as everybody else is speculating? And is Colorado football going to be able to compete in the Big 12? And how are they going to do it? I ask these questions because the speculation continues and continues and continues. Um, And where it's coming from, I'm not really sure. I mean, if there's any speculation, you don't have to go far with me. Uh, Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast, powered by Fanatics. You don't have to go far with me. You just go over to the Denver Broncos. You go over to Denver Broncos, me and Sean Payton, there is no love relationship there. I mean, I just think that uh, the Broncos are going to go over three the next three years in the AFC West. And I don't think he's qualified to coach the Broncos. Others feel different. But let's keep it in hand. Let's get back to the point, Deion Sanders. I have had an opportunity to just about hear from everybody and uh, what their beliefs, what their opinions, who they are, what they are, and how they're going to get it done. And I just started saying, let's take a deeper dive and let's just walk through it. Now, you know, I ran across Bill Simmons today, and Bill through Simmons has got some Colorado culture. Buffaloes on there. Um, and and uh, what Can I want to do, I want to bring them to you because uh, they are basically saying that uh, Dion is uh, unable to do it. They're worried about the culture. I don't know why. Uh, the culture has nothing to do with anything at all. I just think the fact that these guys are – Changing the landscape of college football, it's changed, technology's involved, but uh, I want you to take a listen. And uh, they got me set up, thanks to my IT, Dr. Tom Nugent, Dr. Blue Screen. So I got some new toys to bring you some exciting stuff. Take a listen, folks. Sustainable. And it just seems like there's a lot of chaos over there right now. I love Deion Sanders for all the reasons I should love Deion Sanders, for some of those reasons Russillo was talking about. I do. But I also love college football, and I can't turn a blind eye to the fact that the way you're doing, the way you do what they're trying to do, uh, it just doesn't work. You can't build a line through Transfer Portal. You can supplement through Transfer Portal. You can't build a whole program through it, et cetera, 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 et cetera. So these guys are thinking that they can't be done. They're telling us every reason why it can't be done. I'm a little confused, though, because when you get right down to it, and, folks, I had a chance to source it out, and uh, when you source these things out, it kind of just comes back to you, and it'll it'll, it'll fall right back in your lap. And that, that's kind of what happened for me. But uh, I, I started thinking, and I said, well, wait a minute. You know, with, the, with Deion Sanders and what he did and how he did it and how they loaded up to, to get everybody where they needed to be, and uh, it kind of came down to me that, uh, you know, you got the Pac-12, believe it or not, folks. There, there were eight teams ranked in the Pac-12. Eight teams, okay? And that's in the top 25. That's the most that they've ever had, okay? And he took went over and took over a one-game winning program, okay? That was in a losing program for the life of me. I don't know what everybody was expecting, uh, where they expect him to go back and, uh, you know, win two games because he's on it. He's got him on a plight. Uh, he's rolling 100 percent right down the middle of the pipe. And the thing that uh, nobody wants to talk about is I listen to these guys because they, they're going to backtrack themselves right on into a corner. And uh, if you do this long enough and folks, like I said, I mean, He's, this is an NFL program. It's uh, oversaturated with more uh, competent individuals. There's a lot of individuals on the staff and what they're bringing to the table. Folks, let me just get you right to the cut. You got Phil Lenote, and uh, he's the offensive, court, offensive line coach. And what is his role, and what is he going to do, and how is he going to do it? You know, the bottom line, it is load. It's pronounced load Holt. Okay, he played for the Minnesota Vikings, okay, 2009-2015. Offensive assistant with uh, UCF, Ole Miss, offensive analyst, Oklahoma, offensive analyst. So he's kind of been right at the tailor of it, and now he's the offensive line coach for the Colorado Buffalo. So take a listen to what he has to say 
because this is where it's all going to go, and I'm going to I'm going to back right back into this because you know they can say what they want, you can do what you want, but at the end of the day, this game's going to be played in the trenches, and there's no doubt about it. Take a listen, folks, and uh, we're going to bring this to you. It's just, he's leading the charge on the offensive line. Hey, working for Coach Prime's been great so far, and uh, just looking forward to building a you know an elite unit up front. So I'm excited to be here. Coach, how exciting is to get this first opportunity to be an on-the-field coach after being you know, in an analyst role the last few years? I'm very fired up about it. Um, you know, being in an analyst role, got to work with some great coaches. You know, from Glenn Ellaby, uh, you know, Randy Clemens, Jake Thornton, and most recently Bill Biedenboe. So I, I learned a lot from those guys and was able to pick something from each one of them. And you know, so I'm excited to do it. I've been wanting to do it for a while, and I'm glad the opportunity came. So, folks, there you got it. I mean, he's backing it up. And here's the deal that you got with uh, Lode Holt being the coach up there in the offensive line. Okay, he's coming out the local crew. Okay, so um, he's got grassroots right up there in Colorado. And I know they talked about, you know, Dion doesn't have the kids there. Uh, He's not getting any local kids, not getting any high school. Here's the deal. You could have done this one or two ways. You could have said, Dion, come on in to Colorado and uh, you take over the program we won one game here's our expectation we're going to give you six years to do this if you can get us to two games in the next year to four games in the next year after that and you get us to six we'll call that progress that's not how it works folks okay and when the athletic director brought him in the boosters brought him in colorado had one goal and one intention okay in mind that was to turn the program around Okay, to take somewhere in the Pac-12 that was is God's country, I mean, absolutely beautiful up there, and take that and build it into a national champion. And there's only one way you could do that, okay, and that's by going out there and replacing all the players that uh, you have had in the in the, in the actual football program, and and they were not winning. And for the life of me, I'm not quite sure why everyone else is highly concerned. Um, but here's what happens when these guys get a little ahead of themselves because I told you it was going to come down to the trenches, okay? And I don't know what all this talk about coaching, man. He's got a guy in the saddle, local, played in the league, been an offensive analyst, been at Oklahoma, okay? He's already been over there at Ole Miss, okay? So he's got a good understanding. Him and Pat Shermer are working hand in hand, okay? They're putting that blocking scheme together exactly where they want it. The incoming players who are transferring in, these are starters. Starters. Okay, these are starters who have left their program to come to Colorado. And this thing is corporate enterprise business. And for the life of me, I don't know how individuals think they can just overstep. Because what Dion is saying, and he's making it very clear, and we will get to it, and I'm going to cover and go deeper dive into this, is the fact that he's not only saying, he's saying 97% of the the kids that I have, the young men that I have, are not going to go pro, okay? But I'm giving you an opportunity not only to come in and play football, okay? Let's not forget the education to graduate from the University of Colorado. And let's go a step further. I'm going to get you in corporate enterprise business, okay? And that's what he is teaching. And these are young men who will come out of this football program not only with knowledge of the game of football, if they desire to coach, they're also going to get knowledge in corporate enterprise business. And, folks, that's very, very important. And then I'm going to go on back here. I got one other I'm going to transfer you over to. And, man, oh, man, has he been riding on the coattail for a long time, and I think he's starting to figure it out, too. And when these guys figure it out, here's what happens. They uh, start backpedaling. And I always look for the change in the narrative, and here's a change in the narrative for you. And it's the old man, oh, good, my good friend, uh, Whitlock and uh, the Korean Cosell. I mean, they always are entertaining. I, I, The Korean Cosell lost me one time. I'm going to find that clip. You know, he, he kind of called the African-American culture, you people. And he stood by it. He said, yeah, I said it. Now, that's about as racist as you can get. I'm not going to cross that bridge today. But I'll circle back on that as well. But let's take a listen to this, folks, and you're going to hear what how the narrative is starting to change because if that O-line and D-line gets together and they control the tension, they couldn't run the football and they couldn't stop the run. Take a listen, folks. That's Deion Sanders. He he tells people to clap. They clap. 
<laughs> they fall on every word that comes out of his mouth. Oh, I want y'all to know, you know, I'm black, but I'm not leaving black people. Look, man, Jackson State's campus is like 98% black. Colorado's campus is about 2% black. You did leave black people. Steve, I'm not, I, I don't think this is gonna go well. I don't think it's gonna go well at all. I, I, I think this is going, uh, I think, I really believe this is gonna set black coaches back uh, qu quite a bit. Uh, I, 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 I think Dion and the values that he's showing, or the lack of values that he's showing, are, are, are why, and particularly black coaches that are former players that all want to get jobs. He just basically, from his press conference to his meeting with the players, if I'm someone with a brain, I'm going, this is why I don't hire former great players. They have no... And this is what you got, folks. You got somebody <clears throat> that has put in a, a full-court press. I call it a full-court press. I even call it an attack, but uh, it's running out of fuel. And everybody that set back and attacked Dion and kind of went against him, man, oh, man, that team's getting built. They've got coaches in there. They've got coaches who have played in the NFL. And this is exactly the way it gets done in the NFL. There is no option that you have. And, and I'll be honest with, with you, you know, at the end of the day, it, it would be extremely hard. There are some rare individuals that play football. Power five football that can walk through the door as a five-star freshman and be a starter. I mean, be a starter and be be able to compete at that level. And as you hear these gentlemen starting to backpedal, I want you to really pay attention to how they kind of open the door for another narrative to come in because they know that all that they have done has not affected what Dion has brought forth to the table. Dion has continued on his path. It's everybody that's working in the building. And when you get, I go all the way back to Bill Walsh with the media. He's like, it's us against the media. That's the way the 49ers do it. I mean, it's us against the media. You say what you want. This is media portraying to be a different type of media, but they're not really that type of media. So they're, they're fabricating it as they go. But when you get right down to it, man, in that Colorado building, let, let me tell you something, folks. They're going to be going to war here. And there's no greater movie than I watched than We Were Soldiers. And when you look at it, you know what? Dion's going to be the first on the battlefield and the last to leave. And at the end of the day, these young men are going to take that battlefield. We're, we're winding down. So it's not going to matter who's there, who's not there. That doesn't matter at this point. It matters if we get the continuity. Okay, we got results out of the spring game. We're going to move this thing forward, but here's what also happened. All the players that are leaving, they're going to be way behind when they get to the next university. So they're going to have a lot of catch-up to do, and it may cost them some time because those guys are working, and these men are going to the battlefield. So I want you to, I'm going to play this, and I want you to take, take a listen to how the second narrative is going to kind of creep itself in. Take a listen. No idea the difference between coaching and playing. It's great what he did at Jackson State, recruited a bunch of talent, and they won some games. Uh, that's just not gonna fly at this next level. I just don't see this working, Steve. This is an interesting one. If they say 80% of that business, which is college football coaching, is recruiting, then he has a shot because there's no doubt about it. He has a magnetic personality. He's still a legend. I think enough kids understand who he is that he'll be able to stock his roster with blue chip talent, which I think the transition is already happening. And in terms of the buzz that he's creating, it's already palpable. I, I mean, Jason, I, I'm a college football fan, fanatic and a, and a child of the 80s. I remember in the late 80s all the way till about the early 2000s, Colorado had a real presence on the West Coast. If you actually look at the heartbeat or the foundation of those great teams, most of it was built, or a lot of it was from Southern California. Darian Hagan, Lock High School, George Hemingway, Colton, Dion Figures, uh, Rashan Salam, it was from San Diego, Eric Public the Enemy from Bishop Amont. Okay, and so I look at all these players and I'm thinking, he can recreate some of the magic. Now the question becomes, at Jackson State, Every game he went into in SWAC league play, you know he had a huge talent advantage. Question becomes, 
when can he then level the field for Colorado, which went 11-1, and one, and then create that advantage again? Here's my question to you, Jason. Do you have a problem with him leaving for any other job, or was it the fact that it was the first job that he got offered, or do you think that he left Jackson State too early, that he didn't necessarily fulfill the mission statement that he promised? Because that, because to me, I think this is a really nuanced conversation. There you go, folks. See, the narrative's starting to switch. And when that narrative switch, this is when it gets really interesting. Because they know everything. They These two gentlemen here went on and on and said, Shadur Sanders is not an NFL quarterback. He can't play. And guess what? All this molding is coming together. All the players are coming into the building, okay? All the players inside the building are making an investment. Because regardless what anyone else thinks about Colorado football, those young men, okay, those men and women that are working within the Colorado football program are looking to go win football games. And I told you, there was 18 out of the top 25 that were ranked and my good friends, I told them, I told them as simple as possible. I said, that's going to be tough to win only because Deion Sanders had not built the depth chart. Well, guess what? He's got a year one. Those who have left have gone. Now they got to moved up. Gates coming in with the year two. And folks, you got to understand, I played for Mike Bellotti, University of Oregon head coach when I was at Chico State, him and Nick Aliotti. Those two young men came in and they were young coaches at that time, but they came in and they did exactly what Deion Sanders did. And we took our program, which was a Division II program, to 10th ranked in the nation. And two of those games, the one I dropped the interception that I, I cost us, another Jim Soaker, I mean, he just dialed up against us. But Mike Bellotti left Chico State, him and Nick Aliotti went up to Oregon. Okay, that's why I know Dan Henning, Mike Bellotti built that Oregon program up there, and he transformed it, and Brooks was the head coach. He went on to the NFL, coached the Rams, took the Rams job after Mike Bellotti got in there as an offensive coordinator. Nick Aliotti went, who was our coach at Chico State as well. He went on and coached the D coordinator for the Rams. So this process they're talking about, this has been done time and time again. I've watched it with my own eyes, and uh, I can come back to you, but I'm going to let him finish up with his change of narrative, and we're going to move on because we're going to close up here soon. But here's what he's saying now, and the narrative is starting to change. Pay attention. I, I, my disappointment with him leaving is I felt there was a great opportunity to take Jackson State and SWAC HBCU football mm. to a whole new level. Okay. And I felt like Dion could have been at the forefront of that, and he should have inspired, demanded, talked black celebrities into pouring money into those uh, universities, particularly Jackson State, and just taking that thing to a whole new level. That's where my disappointment. Mm. Second level of disappointment comes down to it's Colorado. It, 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 it's not. It's not Florida State. It's not some SEC team. It's not. It's it's the worst team in the Pac-12. They went one and eleven last year. It's been a graveyard for virtually every coach that's come in there after Bill McCartney. And and Steve, what what I may end up having to, if I'm proven wrong on this, and I, I very well very well might be wrong. Maybe he doesn't fail. Folks, do you understand what I'm saying to you now? This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. And I've seen this time and time and time. Guys come out, and they come out strong, and they're spouting. And they're saying all these things about what a man can't do. But uh, when you have been chosen and you are God-gifted, okay, that means you move to the front of the line. And Deion Sanders has been in the front of the line for a long time. And when you talk about what his capabilities are, and what he can do and how he does it. Folks, I don't kid you on this. I just bring you what it is because at the end of the day, I do know this, that uh, Deion Primetime Sanders is a player. Deion Primetime Sanders is a big-time player, and he knows how to get it done. So just, just take a listen. And here's where Deion is really going with this because at the end of the day, He's done what he was supposed to do. He's wrapped it up, and I'm going to wrap it up with this, folks. 
They're going to call it cockiness. They're going to call it arrogance. But you're going to call it confidence. Because I don't want my confidence to, I'm going to say something and I want you to hold on to it, all right? Get your cameras ready because this is game. Do not allow my confidence to offend your insecurity. Oh, if I could get up and dance, I would dance right now. If I could get up and shout, I would shout right now. Do not allow my confidence to offend your insecurity because I dress like I dress because I'm confident. I look like I look because he's confident. We walk like we walk because we're confident. I don't even use cologne. Now, that, 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 that somebody asked me, what is that you wear? And I said, confidence. Folks, do you understand what I'm telling you? Dion Primetime Sanders is walking around with the complete confidence. He's believing he's going to get it done. He knows he's going to get it done. And this has already been predestined before the foundation. So all things are possible to those who believe you're just watching it. And here's what's going to happen as I close out here today is um, forever grateful. I promised I'd get better and better so you could go higher and higher. But here's what's going to happen. This is going to change the entire landscape of college football if he's successful. Because football in the NFL, it's a copycat league. And I guarantee you this, okay, with what Deion Sanders is doing, it's unprecedented. The recruiting through social media, the attention, it's like the Dallas Cowboy. He's been on this stage since he walked into Atlanta. He was on it when he walked into San Francisco. He's not been a man that's always agreed with everybody, as him and Jerry Rice did not agree. They went head-to-head -head every day in practice, and when they disagreed, he went on to the Dallas Cowboys, and he shined up there. The shine has been on this man throughout his life. However, he much is given, much is required. He understands. He does this for these young men. His life is already completed. He's now living his legacy. And you're not going to have anybody that's went through amputations that has moved and given his heart and soul to this program. This is Deion Sanders. This is the Colorado Buffaloes. And this is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast powered by Fanatics. And we understand all things are possible to those who believe. We'll see you soon.